guys and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to talk you through all of the books I read in 2020. I know this is a little bit late but I haven't had time to film since the end of 2020. I'm currently filming this on the 5th so hopefully this will be up this weekend and you can see it in the first week of 2021. So I thought first I'd go through the main stats of my reading and then I've got all of my books piled down here, all of the physical ones, show you what I read. So let's go through my stats. I've got them written in my little notebook. So in total I read 71 books which is the most I've ever read in a year and is actually double plus one of what I read last year. I read 35 last year. Obviously we've been in lockdown so I've had more free time to read than other years and I started 2020 as an English literature student so that's probably the most books I'm ever going to read in a year in the entirety of my life so I'm quite proud of that. I know that it's nowhere near what some people read but for me I thought that was really good. So 40 of those were standalone novels or books, 30 were series um, and one was a reread. So about 57% of the books were intended for adult audiences, 32 were young adult and 10% were middle grade. 53% of the books that I read I borrowed so I don't actually have everything to show you. I actually borrowed a lot of ebooks from my library this year just because it saves money and also when it's an ebook obviously it helps with infections and stuff. The library I don't even think has been open this year properly. If it has I don't know but I'm like a member of two different libraries so I like to see what's on offer in both online. And it's just so much easier. The book is there straight away and then you can just return it without leaving your home which is obviously good at the moment and also I don't like leaving the house anyway. So the biggest genre that I read was romance and that was at 20% of my reading followed by contemporary which was 18% and actually apparently fantasy was 18% as well and I'm not sure what I counted as fantasy because looking at my pile I don't see much fantasy unless I counted Harry Potter as fantasy I guess I might have done um, and then 13% was classics and then all the others were smaller like 3 or 4% and then for a month by month breakdown in January I read 7 books in February I read 6 March was 9 books, April was my best month and I read 10, um, May I read 9 books, June 7, July 6, August 2, September 6, October 2, November 4 and December 3. And then in terms of star ratings on my spreadsheet I do it in 0.5s so I had 2 books that I gave 2 stars to, 4 books that I gave 2.5 stars to, 9 books that I gave 3 stars to, 9 books that I gave 3.5 stars to, uh, 23 books that I gave 4 stars to, I seem to like 4 stars, um, 13 that I gave 4.5 stars to and 5 that I gave and 11 that I gave 5 stars to. And I think that is all the stats so now I'm going to get into all of the books that I read. I'm just getting up, I keep track on a spreadsheet but also on Goodreads so I'm just going to get up my Goodreads because I'm going to go through all the books I read in order of when I read them from January through to December. Okay so the first book I've read I do have a physical copy and that is The Trial of Lady Chatterley's Lover and I read this for my Scandal and Outrage module at Uni for Literature. Um, this was just to give more context to um, Lady Chatterley's Lover and how it was perceived when it was released and after it was released. It's a quick read, it's really small, it's literally just a transcription of the trial like it's um it's non-fiction, it's true. Honestly I didn't particularly enjoy it but I do enjoy the cover. The cover is, I don't know if you can see from this angle but it's foiled gold and it's pink and it's just a really nice cover. So the next book I read I borrowed from the library so I don't have it with me and that is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets which is the second one in the Harry Potter series. I started reading Harry Potter, I've never read the Harry Potter series before um, 2019 and I started reading it on Christmas Day in 2019 and I read the first one and then I worked my way through the other ones in 2020 so that was obviously the second one I read. The next book I have again physically and that is Lady Chatterley's Lover. As I was saying I studied this for my Scandal and Outrage module at uni. Um, I'd wanted to read this for ages because it's meant to be a bit scandalous and some of my classmates at A-level wrote on this because we could choose which books we wrote on at A-level or out of a list. And I didn't. And I thought that this would be really interesting, but honestly, 
I really didn't like it. I really struggled getting through it. It was a really slow read. I mean, it's quite, it's like a normal sized book, but the text is really small and it was just really heavy and it was a lot of description and yeah, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. The next book again was for the same module at uni. That was the, I had two modules for English at uni in my last semester there and one was this and then a different one was a romantic poetry module which obviously I wasn't reading novels for. But the next book I read is Fifty Shades of Grey. Hefty book, everyone knows what it's about. I just find it really funny that I got to study this in a literature degree. Like I read this as part of my literature degree. And I even wrote on it actually. I wrote on this and Twilight in my final essay and it was I think my best essay of my final semester. So that's a fun fact. The next thing I read was actually a play and it was The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman and no it is not the entirety of this because this would be a many days long play. It's a very small section of this. I really really enjoyed it. It's about boarding school of girls and one of the girls spread rumours about the two teachers who are female and it's just how what happens after that and how rumours can affect people's lives and impact people's lives. Um, so if you want a quick read of a play, I really enjoyed this and I definitely recommend it and I am planning on reading her other plays that are also in this book. At some point, they're not on my immediate TBR, but at some point I'm going to get around to reading the rest of these. The next book is the third book in the Harry Potter series and that's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Honestly, I can't remember much about what happened. All I can picture in my brain is the scene from the film with the night bus and the newspaper with... I can't even remember his name. Can you tell that I just am not like a big Harry Potter fan? Like I enjoyed the books but I'm not going to be rereading them anytime soon and I fell asleep in all of the films. But yeah, that was the next book I read. The next one again was borrowed from the library. This one I actually read as an audiobook and it was Siddhartha which is basically about this guy who kind of goes on his own spiritual journey. Again, it's a classic and it was on my 100 books to read poster which is why I read it, read it. Um, so I could scratch it off. It didn't engage me massively. I just listened to it whilst I was doing other things. But yeah, that was the next one I read. I now realise, looking back at this, that I said that I only reread one book and that was a lie. I reread two. This is the other one. And it is The Catcher in the Rye, which again I read for Scandal and Outrage, but I actually read this previously on my gap year. Again, it's quite a small book, but this one does still take me a little while to get through, even though I've read it twice now. But I really, really enjoy this book. You follow Holden as he is basically kicked out of school but kind of leaves and adventures around New York City by himself and is basically coming of age, a teenager, finding himself, figuring out his place in the world. The next book I read was not the whole of this hefty book but the first one in this. And this is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. My boyfriend got me this book for my birthday which is at the end of January. Um, in fact, it's in 19 days as I'm filming this. This is obviously a really famous science fiction. Honestly, it's weird, but um, it's entertaining and kind of funny. Um, as you'll see, I've made it over halfway through this now and we'll be talking about it again in a little bit as I have read other books from this as this contains five books. And yeah, the first one I read was obviously the first one. The next book I have is a physical book, but I actually borrowed it as an audiobook from the library because as you can see, it is another chunky book. And if we know anything about me, it's that books that look this chunky are not the one for me. Um, this wasn't part of my literature module, but it was on the recommended reading. And my friend who was in the year above me, she'd given me her books because she'd done that module previously and was getting rid of them, um, which is really kind of her, so I didn't have to pay for loads of those books. So I thought I'd listen to this on audiobook when I saw it pop up on my library. I realise I haven't said what it is. It's The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall and honestly, I read this, I read this so long ago now, I can't remember what happens. I really can't remember what happens. I know it follows a girl and I think she's a lesbian. Yeah, she is a lesbian, but I can't really remember much else other than that because I did read this back in February or something and I feel like it was the time when the pandemic was starting to become like a thing. Um, so I don't actually think that my brain processed most of this audiobook when I was listening to it but that is another one that I read. The next one is the fourth one in the Harry Potter series and that's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. 
I think this might have been one of my least favourite ones. I really wasn't interested in the whole game, like I, the whole challenge. It's really not my thing. I really don't like descriptions of games. My least favourite thing about Harry Potter is all the descriptions of Quidditch. Like, I don't care. Reading about a... I don't know. It'd be like reading about a football match. It's boring. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I can't really remember much about that one other than Robert Pattinson's character dies in the film. Sorry if you haven't watched the film already, but that is all I remember. The next book I read, I do have the physical book somewhere, but I couldn't tell you where I'm looking at my shelves, and I just couldn't find it this morning when I was looking for all of the books that I had physically. And that is The Group by Mary McCarthy. Again, this was for my literature module. Followed a group of women in New York and their lives after they had graduated college and the various different things that they do. Again, this one was quite a chunky book and I actually really struggled to get through it. I really didn't enjoy it. It was okay, but I wouldn't ever reread it, I don't think. The next one I borrowed from the library, again it's a classic and it was The Handmaid's Tale and I just thought I should read that one as it is a classic and I feel like it's been brought up a lot in the last few years in relation to American politics so it's really interesting to read that with the background of American politics if that makes any sense. The next book was again a borrow from the library and it was Northern Lights which is the first one in his Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. Again, this was a book that had too much description for me. There was a lot of description about a battle scene between bears and... It's a middle grade book. I'd say it's a middle grade book, maybe young YA, but I really struggled getting through it. I, like, really struggled, which I don't think you should at the age of 22 reading a middle grade book. Um, but I'm going to take that as I was quite bored reading it. I do plan on reading the rest of the series, otherwise I can't scratch off the square for the series on my book poster, but that is the only reason I'll be finishing it. Um, I went into the book not necessarily expecting to enjoy it because The Golden Compass, the film adaptation, really isn't one of my favourite films. I've watched it a few times when I was a kid. I think I have it on DVD, but it just drags. It's very long. It could be shorter. Again, the next book I borrowed from the library, so I don't have to show you. It is The Picture of Dorian Gray, which again is another classic. I don't feel like I need to say much more about it. It's about a man that has his picture portrait done and he doesn't age. And frankly, again, I can't really remember much else that happened in that. I feel like I've read so many books this year that they've all kind of got a bit muddled in my head, especially the ones I listen to on audiobook. Again, the next two are both classics, so I'm just going to whiz through them. And that is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I definitely enjoyed, but... It wasn't exactly what I was expecting from it. I was expecting it to be longer and I think I was expecting more from it. I think I was expecting more depth in the plot, but I enjoyed it. Probably wouldn't read it again, but it's crossed off my classic list now. Next one, again, was a long one and it was Tales Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Everyone knows Dickens is difficult to read. It's a proper classic. You just have to get on and do it. So I think I listened to that one on an audiobook as well. Next one is probably really boring because it was a critical text that I read for an essay and it was called The Catcher in the Rye Censorship Controversies and Post-War American Character which is a mouthful and it was by Pamela Hunt Steinle and on Goodreads when it tells you which book was the least read that you'd read that was it and I think 11 other people have read it this year Again, very niche. I read it for an essay. I included it in my essay. Um, so I thought I'd include it on this list as well because it was a full book that I borrowed from the uni library and I did finish it. The next book I really enjoyed and it was the second one in the U series by, by Caroline Kepnes and it's called Hidden Bodies. I love this series. I love the TV show. I love the books. I cannot wait for the third book to come out and I cannot wait for the third series to come out. I don't know when the third series comes is coming out but the third book is coming out in April um so if you'd like me to do like a reading vlog of reading that one for the first time then please let me know in the comments below um because I'd love to do that when it comes out I actually need to pre-order it so that I can do that yeah but I shall when lockdown started me and Ella decided that we were going to try and do an online book club as part of the English Literature Society that we were on the committee on for the last two years. Obviously neither of us are at Cardiff anymore so neither of us are on the committee anymore. Um, so I read that for that. People didn't seem that interested in doing an online 
book club so me and Ella spoke about it for like 20 minutes and then just had a normal chat over FaceTime. The classic. Again, another classic next is To The Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I'd read some Virginia Woolf before and really enjoyed it so um, I wanted to read some more and tick off another classic as I keep saying. As a literature student I feel inclined to be able to say that I've read all the classics. Obviously I haven't yet but I'm working towards it. I do think I don't know, it's just a thing, I feel like I should read all the classics as a literature student. The next one was so that I could scratch it off my list again and that was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Everyone knows Alice in Wonderland and children's classic was just to scratch it off my list and I don't think I'd ever actually read it. My camera is flashing so I'm going to bear and then start it again. It stopped flashing. Okay, the next book I do have physically. And this was the first book that I got in my posed book box and it is The Little Snake by A. A. L. Kennedy. I really enjoyed this. It's a tiny book and it's about a girl and her friendship with a snake in a warm tour environment. I loved this. It was so wholesome but slightly twisted at the same time. And I also absolutely love the cover. I don't know if you can see it from here but again it's kind of like a very pale green with gold foil. The next book was the fifth one in the Harry Potter series and that one is called Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I think that's the one where he finds out about the parents being in on a thing and I don't know. You've probably read it and probably know it better than I do because I've only read it once. But that was the next one I did. The next one again was a... I want to say it was an audiobook and it's called Then She Vanishes by Claire Douglas. No, I actually read this one but it was a borrow from the library. It follows a girl who... Um, basically her friend's sister had gone missing when they were younger and, and she's now like a journalist and she's trying to get to the bottom of it. I actually really enjoyed it and would recommend it if you're looking for kind of like a mystery come thriller to read. And it was quite an easy one to read as well, like it wasn't a difficult read. The next book I read is Isla and the Happily Ever After. I picked this up in a charity shop in 2019 I want to say not realising that this is the third book in a series. Luckily the three seem to be able to stand alone and the story makes sense without having read the other two, just you have more knowledge of periphery characters if you've read the other two. I really enjoyed this, it's just a YA romance set between New York and Paris which is brilliant. I love both those cities. So if you're looking for like a YA romance to read I would recommend this one. The next one is another YA romance and it is Call It What You Want by Bridget Kemmerer. I love Bridget Cameron's YA romances. I'm yet to read the Curse So Dark and Lonely series and I have been meaning to, but this book I actually pre-ordered and I'd got like her little signature book plate in here. I'd had it for a while, I think I'd had it since 2019, um, but I got around to reading it this time and yeah, it's about two teenagers who are completely different, but they're, both their reputations have been ruined in a different way. I really enjoyed this and definitely I'm someone that anytime Bridget Camera releases a YA like romance I'm definitely going to be picking it up. I hope to get to her um, fairy tale series this year, fingers crossed. The next book I read was Juliet and Romeo and no I did not say that wrong by David Hewson and it was basically a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. What more can I say, it was kind of set in the same time that you'd expect Romeo and Juliet to be set in. Then the next book I read I borrowed from the library and it was the first one in the Gossip Girl series. It was as trashy as you'd expect it to be. The storyline was a bit different to the TV show. I enjoyed it as very light reading. It didn't take me long to read at all, maybe like a couple of hours. The next one I read was The Kissing Booth, the first one in The Kissing Booth um, by Beth Reekles. I'd watched the film and really liked it so I thought I'd read the book. Honestly, I prefer the film to the book. The book wasn't bad at all, but it's set in California and I lived in California in 2019 and it comes across quite evidently as someone who hasn't lived there themselves. Um, some things just don't quite add up, but that's a very small minor detail and I'm sure most people who are reading it in the UK probably gloss over those things. It might not are with them as it did with me. Um, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon to read the next one yet but I probably will at some point. As I said this hefty one would come up again. I read the second one which is called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. It was set in a restaurant at the end of the universe. What more can I say? I'm 
then that is followed by the sixth Harry Potter book, which is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Again, can't remember much of it. It's Harry Potter. They're all the same, just set slightly differently and they're all slightly older. Then I read the second book in the Girl Online series, which is Girl Online on tour. I enjoyed this one, maybe not so much as the first one, but it was alright. Um, wasn't overly keen on the plot twist, but oh well. The next book I read was You Know You Love Me, which is the second book in the Gossip Girl series. Again, trashy short. Enjoyed it. The next book I absolutely loved, and I did have a physical copy of this one, but I gave it away because I wanted to share how much I loved this book, and that is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I really enjoyed this book. I got my mum to read it, and then, yeah, I sent it to one of my friends for her to read, and she loved it. Um, it follows Tiff, Fee, and Leon, who are flatmates, but they share the same bed, but they work different hours, so they never actually meet each other. Um, and it's a romance, and there's other stuff going on, and I really enjoyed it, and I'd really recommend it. The next book I loved so much and I read it after watching the TV show like everyone else and that was Normal People by Sally Rooney. I loved that book so much and I loved the TV show and I wish there was scope for a second series but I don't think there is. There's not really scope for like a second one in the novel either. Then the next book I read was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Kan Braithwaite. Again, everyone was reading this one. I really loved it. I love a good, like, mystery. Then I read the seventh Harry Potter book, which is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Again, he goes and searches for things to save the world. The next one was a really wholesome book, and that was The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan, which I loved. It was so, so wholesome. Um, what more can I say? Go and read it if you want like a nice cheery read that has an old person in. The next book I'm sure everyone read this year and it was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins which was the prequel to The Hunger Games. Um, I'm filming this on my lunch break so I'm just gonna whiz through these books now I think. I don't need to say much about most of them. Then I read the first book in the Vampire Diaries series and that is The Awakening. Again short trashy YA. Then I read Sally Rooney's other book, which is Conversations with Friends. Again, I really enjoyed this. I know a lot of people didn't enjoy it as much as normal people, but I personally loved it. Then I read the final book in the Girl Online series, which is Going Solo, which I so much preferred to the second one. And I felt like Penny's character really developed in this one, so keep persevering if you read the second one and didn't like it too much. Then one of my favourite books of the year is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I feel like everyone's read on booktube. It's a brilliant book. I really, really loved it. Then I read a slightly odd one, which is Reasons She Goes to the Woods by Deborah K. Davies. Um, Deborah K. Davies actually came to uni in second year and did a speech for us. Um, and I just thought this book sounded really interesting because it's like a bunch of vignettes. Uh, honestly, I didn't like the main character that much, so I didn't enjoy the book that much, but I did enjoy the writing book I read on an audiobook and that was Becoming by Michelle Obama which I highly recommend everyone goes and listens to because it's read by her and it just made it seem so much more in depth and detailed and personal so I'd really recommend that one. The next book is Wild Like Me by Louise Pentland. I was on the YouTube train you know wanted to read what she'd done. I think it's an okay book. I don't think that I was necessarily the intended audience and um, I'm not rushing to read the other ones but I probably will get around to it at some point. Then I read The Struggle, which is the second book in the Vampire Diaries series. Again, trashy. Then I read the third book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series, which is called Always and Forever Lara Jean. I loved this series so much, and I can't wait for them to bring out a third film. Then I struggled my way through One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey, because again, it's a classic and I needed to read it. Then we moved on to the third Vampire Diaries book, which is called The Fury. Again, it was trashy, it was short, it was sweet. Then I read This Is Where It Ends by Marike Nishkamp. I'm not sure how to say the name, but it was basically about a school shooting. I thought the premise sounded interesting. It was an okay book. Then I read another one of my favourites, which was Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. Again, my mum really loved this when she read it after me as well. It follows Queenie, who lives in London. She's a black girl who's dating a white boy. And stuff happens at work and with her mental health, and I really, really love this book. Then I read The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Again, I borrowed this. This was like a mystery who done it murder thing. I really enjoyed it. I read the second one in the um, One of Us is Lying series, which is One of Us is Next. Again, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't. And I read The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell, which I loved. And it basically is another mystery, like a family murder, suicide mystery. So would definitely recommend this one. 
I read two more mysteries, um, another one by Lisa Jewell called I My Recording Stopped, I'm back. And then I read A Girl Named Anna by Lizzie Barber, which basically follows someone that have been kidnapped. Then I read The Language of Birds by Jill Dawson. This one I got in another repose box and I really enjoyed it and it's set on a true story. Then I read Daisy Jones and the Six, which actually let me down compared to Seven Husbands. I didn't like it quite so much. Then we did another classic in time to watch the film on Netflix and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which I really enjoyed and I really, really love the film because I do really love Lily James. There's a squizzle outside. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which again, I really enjoyed that book too. Then The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris, which again, I really loved, and that was set on a true story too. I'd really recommend that if you want an inside look into what living in a concentration camp might have been like. Obviously, she wasn't there herself, but she based it on the stories of a real life person who was there. Then I read Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People by Rennie Edo Lodge, which taught me so much about racism in my own country that I didn't get taught about in school, which I should have done. Then we moved on to a new release for 2020, which was The Magpie Society by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCulloch. I really enjoyed this. I'm waiting for the next one because a lot of the questions I had weren't answered and I'd really like them to be answered in the next one, but I feel like it might be a three-part series. Then I read The Mothers by Britt Bennett, which I got in another repose box. Again, I really enjoyed this one. It was basically the story of coming of age, not coming of age, but it followed a girl through her life from teenager to young, young-ish adult. Then I read Fake It Till You Break It by Jenna P. Nukin, which is a fake dating story, which we love in a YA. Really, really love this. Loved the characters. Would recommend if you're looking for a nice YA. We're almost there. Then I read, but I listened to it on an audiobook, but I have the copy. New Moon by Stephanie Mayer because I've never read the Twilight series until I started reading it last year but I have all the books so we're gonna get through it soon-ish hopefully. We're almost at the end. This is the one reread that I counted as a reread because I forgot about the other one but it's Charlie St Cloud by Ben Sherwood and I love this book. Um, he sees ghosts, it's heart-wrenching and also it's set in like a sailing community and my family sails so I feel like I understand it. Then we have the third book in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is Life, the Universe and Everything, and I plan on reading the last two, which is this chunky section, before my birthday in 19 days. So let's see if I can do that, hopefully, fingers crossed. And then the final book I read was I Have No Secrets by Penny Jolson, which my mum got me for Christmas, and it tells the story of a girl named named Gemma who has cerebral palsy and she is non-verbal and cannot communicate but someone tells her something that she needs to tell the police and it basically follows her learning how to communicate and basically follows her through a lot of stuff. I really enjoyed this book. And that is all the books I read in 2020 and I managed to film that all on my lunch break and now I've got to take a thumbnail and eat. But if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you in my next video.